in the last lecture, uh, I discussed about uh, balancing, and then uh, we saw that you know how balancing can be detected, be it in a in a plane which is uh, within the two bearings, or in a plane which is an overhang out of a bearing in a uh, shaft system. But as you will see in industry, many of the problems occur because of an imbalance in a rotating system and uh, we must also know what are the methods available to us for doing a field balancing or for the matter doing a balancing and then specifically we will see how field balancing can be done and then today in this lecture we will discuss about couple of ways how field balancing can be done on a rotor system having a single plane unbalanced. Well, uh, you all know the need for balancing. Because it gives rise to an radial unbalanced force and which could load the bearings, which could create ununiform deformation in the rolls. is a roll and if there is an unbalance, if it is a long roll some length like in the case of a paper mill the number of rolls, if there is an unbalance the thin layer of paper which is there can have an non-uniform thickness. So, in effect this is going to affect the product quality, affect the bearings and if things fail it will affect the machine life and that is more important for us to have a longer machine life because of ensuring that there is no unbalance. Now, how can this be done? So, we can always remove the rotor and bring it back to a dedicated balancing machine. There are commercially available balancing machines. But many a times it is just not possible to do or to have a balancing machine which will uh, where we can bring the rotor into the system. Okay. So, how do we ensure that the system is balanced? So, there are what we do we have to do in, in that case what is known as do a field balancing. So, without removing the disc from the rotor we will balance it and there are balancing can be done in either in single plane or multi plane. If it is a long rotor this could be doing in balancing could be done in multiple planes. Or we can uh, do it in single plane particularly for short rotors. we can do it in single plane balancing. Now, I will discuss how this single plane balancing is done by these two methods. One is a single, single channel phase and viruson measurement, one another is three point viruson measurements. So, if I look at the disc, 
okay how do i create or a non balance suppose there is a non balance mass me so with some reference suppose this is my zero degree with some reference axis i need to know what this angle theta is and then what is the unbalanced amount so once i have that my theta correction would be this angle so theta correction is nothing but theta plus 180 degree and then the amount of unbalanced mass me and this is done or this is known as single plane balancing so the first and foremost is to know this reference axis so whenever i have one end i mean by this disk i mean on the shaft i have a disk so that was just a side view of this shaft okay so in the from the side view i can see suppose this is my unbalanced mass me i need to rotate it and usually to measure this reference axis we have some probe here which will be measuring which could be the transducer okay to measure and this is usually the velocity pickup location or wherever there is a keyway on the shaft okay so this could be my keyway so physically on the disk i can have some marker so with reference to that marker how do i know it is zero degree so whenever in my velocity pickup in the time domain i get a pulse this means this is at 0 degrees because <clears throat> whenever this key wave is right below the velocity pickup i will get this pulse so this signals my 0 degree okay and then from there i can so always whenever i have theta correction i will measure my theta plus 180 degree from this point so this is very important as the first step so let me tell you the procedure here in the single plane point balancing is what i have shown here there is some mass so put a once per revolution marker on the, the rotating disk that can be picked up by any optical photo tachometer or use a reluctance type pickup above a shaft keyway to provide a once per revolution trigger signal for rotational measurements as shown in this figure okay by the way this figure is from my book uh, machinery condition monitoring uh, principles and practices so you all can refer to that book for detailed so this is my shaft and here i have put the vibration transducer because the vibration transducer can only be put on a bearing housing and this is my tacho probe which is just below the keyway so if you see in single plane balancing i need to know the relative phase angle between the vibration measurements and the tacho probe so for that i can have a dual channel fft analyzer of course you know dedicated because i need to know this phase angle between them to find out the phase angle there used to be dedicated phase meters or you can have a dual channel fft analyzer so if i have two signals x and y i can find out the angle between h x y and that is the phase angle and in the last class i had told you how we can calculate that and for us the dual channel fft analyzer calculates that phase so the first point is mark the location below the rotational speed measurement on the shaft as a reference point as 0 degree so this becomes a 0 degree now 
Next is mount a vibration transducer like an accelerometer on a bearing housing close to the rotating disc. So, this will be closed otherwise it cannot be too long otherwise there will be couples coming in. So, this will behave as if they are in phase. The rotational speed transducer and the variation can be made in the same angle in the same orientation with 0 degree angle between them as shown as this figure here. Okay. And so, for, for phase angle measurements between the tachometer and the accelerometer, I can use the dual channel FFT analyzer, which will do this kind of calculations. Now, at the desired rotational speed of balancing, run the rotor and measure the initial response V naught and the phase angle alpha theta. Okay. So, just measure at the rotational speed, because I will tell you, we need to also measure at the same rotational speed. Rotational speed of balancing must be at the speed of normal operation of the pin because of the fact let me tell you one reason. I have a machine running at 30,000 rpm at its normal operating speed. Now, at 30,000 rpm there is some residual un unbalanced mass and suppose I balance it at only 3000 rpm. If there is a little residual unbalance, this un unbalance is going to blow up to a large force at high speeds of 30,000 rpm. So, balancing was done at 3000 rpm and operating is uh, operation is being done or the machine is operating at 30,000 rpm. So, 10 times. So, this unbalanced mass will blow up by a factor of 100. So, this is something we want us to keep in mind and I have seen many case studies despite the balancing machines fail, because a vendor was supposed to do the balancing at a normal operating speed, they usually do not have machines to balance at the operating speed. So, do it they do it at a lower speed and the residual unbalance blows up at the high operating speed. So, this is something you have to keep in mind. Coming back to point number 5 here. So, at the desired rotational speed of balancing run the rotor and measure this unbalanced response V naught and the phase angle alpha naught. So, then we will attach a trial mass okay, at any location on the disc and then we will measure the vibration and the phase angle because of the trial mass V t and alpha t. So, the compensation mass is then calculated by this expression V naught by uh, sorry V naught by V t times m t. So, this is my compensation mass and then I will get the compensation angle as alpha c is alpha naught plus 180 degree. So, we will remove the trial mass and attach the compensation mass at the compensation angle measured from the reference axis. So, this is how this single channel phase and variation measurement is done in the laboratory. So, I will have a rotating shaft with a disc, wherein I can put in a known unbalanced mass just for the sake of discussions here. And this is the accelerometer which is kept on the bearing housing. This is the tachometer a tacho probe to measure the reference axis and the rotational speed. So, initial unbalance at 0 degree okay, at some 0 degree because this is the reflector tape and this happens to be the 0 degree mark then we measure the initial unbalanced response by taking the transfer function. So, at this same rotational speed the unbalanced response is 11.5 millimeters per second square and the phase angle is 64.8 degrees. Okay. Then we will put a trial mass of 6.14 grams to the system the trial mass has been attached. We will measure the trial mass response as 12.8 degrees, 12.8 uh, millimeters per second square and 121 degrees and then we will calculate the compensation mass as V naught by V t times M t 
and the compensation mass measured from the trial mass axis is given by from the trial mass axis. Okay. So, if you did not have the trial mass axis, this should have been not there. Okay. It could have been taken from the reference axis. Okay. You can do it either way and then we can uh, balance it. So, this is one way of balancing a shaft just by having one measurement without stopping the machine and you know, we run it once and uh, put a trial mass and measure the two responses and then measure the phase angle. But only thing is that I need to measure the phase angle and sometimes that could be a challenge in in situ measurements. And of course, in this experiment the residual balance then came down to about 6.02 millimeters per second square and it all depends on how good your trial mass is, how sensitive you are uh, to the initial mass and so on. And this is one of the very popular ways of balancing single plane balancing in systems. And the another method of balancing is known as the three point balancing. Here you see there are no phase measurements that is the advantage of this is I do not require any sophisticated dual channel FFT analyzer to do the phase measurements. Only thing is that I have to measure four vibration measurements okay, and then only one vibration the same vibration meter is used, same trial is used, rotational speed measurements is not required. However, we need to start and stop the machine each time to put the vibration uh, weights, the trial weights. So, the procedure goes like this, I have a disk wherein I have put the reference axis has some 0 degree. So, mark 3 locations at 0 degree, 120 degree and 240 degree. Mount a vibration transducer with a readout right here. Measure the initial unbalance present as V naught. Put a trial mass M T. Measure the vector as V 1 at 0 degrees. Similarly, put another trial mass, I mean remove the trial mass from 0 degree, put it at 120 degrees. Okay, measure the response V2. Similarly, remove then, then, then the third run or the fourth run, remove the trial mass and put it at 240 degrees, and then I will get these vectors V1 at 0 degrees, V2 at 120 degrees, V3 at 240 degrees, then I will get the V correction mass as this. But mind you, these are all vector additions, and then we have the correction mass given by the sum resultant of this vector V c which is nothing but V c magnitude and it comes with the phase angle theta c and the correction mass M c is given by V naught by V c times M t and the correction mass is applied on a circle of the same radius by the way. It has to be all of the same radius and the correction mass is theta c plus 180 degree. And I am sure in many of the PG labs on vibrations or condition monitoring, these are done. So, and uh, you can see only thing that you have to have this V c as a vector vector summation and this is uh, very much uh, preferred in the industry it is very simple okay and uh, no phase measurements all you have is uh, three measurements and then you have to have a zero degree and so on and uh, in, in uh, as you will, I must tell you, those of you who are uh, attending this course online, live, and have registered for this course, and uh, there are many uh, small consulting houses, you know, day in and day out, they you know just carry this equipment with them, just a vibration meter and a, a trial mass, and do a vector summation, and do field balancing of ID fans. FD fans, pump impeller, okay. 
and make a living out of uh, balancing rotating machines. Okay, but only thing that you have to be very careful, as I was telling you in the last class, uh, in the uh, little while ago, that the balancing must be done at the same operating speeds. Otherwise, if you do it at a lesser speed, this unbalanced mass is going to blow up, and then we'll have problems with this. So I will give you a practical example of three-point balancing, which we have uh, done in our uh, laboratory. The same kit. This is a machinery fault simulator, uh, which we can uh, have. And by the way, this machinery fault simulator is almost uh, very popular in every universities and so on, wherein uh, we can simulate many experiments. And many of the results which I am going to share with you uh, in this uh, lecture series or in this course are out of experiments done on this rig. So we have an uniaxial accelerometer put on the bearing which is uh, supporting this unbalanced disc, this yellow color disc or the golden color disc. Okay. So, we measure the initial unbalance uh, some units of 133 uh, uh, millimeter per second square if you can see in the 5 to 10 meter. It is immaterial, but I just wanted to show you how simple this is. Okay. Uh, we run it only thing that you have to know the reference phase. Which one is your 0 degree? So, physically, your 0 degree should correspond to a point sorry, okay. so, to a point physically on the system. Mm -hmm. The disk. So, you can put a marking tape, put a paint, etcetera. And something about this trial weights, <coughs> I have seen in many places they weld the final mass. Okay. Even today, if you see the automobile tire rims. Okay. I am not drawing the well, let me draw the tire. Okay. Excuse my drawing, and this is not a perfect circle, but it's okay. So imagine if this there was an heavy bit of unbalance in the tire and the vehicle was going on a road. So every time the vehicle is going to get subjected to a force and this force is going to transmit and then it will excite the response in the body. Okay. So, this response may not be desirable. So, in people in NVH that is noise, vibration and harshness, they do what is known as TPA transfer path analysis to find out the effects of on disturbance. Disturbance could be excitation from road or unbalance in a tire. So, imagine if you are driving a very very high speed vehicle uh, okay, running at you know, very high speeds on the highways and then if your tires were unbalanced. So, you will be subjected to forces for tires vehicle say. So, they will you will there will be a if the forces are not in phase that means all four are not at the same uh, time at the same direction you the vehicle could have a twisting movement could have torsions so this is going to affect the response of you uh, I mean the feel of the vehicle when you are driving at high speed so nowadays you know if you if you go to change the tire of your vehicle people do balancing of the rims and there are 
dedicated balancing machines which do all this uh, balancing for you all. But one has to know the importance and the effect of unbalance in high speed machines. And the challenges today are when you are talking about high speed engines. For example, you know we talk about the rocket engines, the cryo engines running at 70,000 rpm. So, you can understand if a little bit of residual unbalance is there, how much of problem it can create. Okay. So, continuing with this, we measure the vibration at 0 degrees, we get a value 1.56 meter millimeters per second square, we measure the vibration level at 120 degrees as 2.03 millimeters per second square and we measure the vibration at 240 degrees at 7.35 millimeters per second square. So, once you have these vectors, you will do a vector summation and get the compensation mass. By the way, this is all vector summation and then you have the compensation mass and then we will put it at the correction plane of uh, alpha c plus 180 degree okay. and thus the residual unbalance in a system can be done. So, this was the so today we discussed about two examples wherein we can do in situ balancing. Now, why do we do in situ balancing or field balancing? It is because of the fact that this machine or this shaft cannot be easily dismantled and brought over to the shop where we have a dedicated balancing machine rather we do it in situ and in situ we can do it single plane balancing just by measuring a vibration and phase or we can do what is known as the three point me vibration measurements. Okay. And of course, there are many commercial balancing software available if you uh, look into the internet there are many companies uh, who make a living out of balancing rotating machines throughout the world and the softwares are there to help you, but there is no rocket science in the software. I, this is nothing but a vector summation of the vectors which has been created because of the unbalanced mass and the trial mass and all we have to do is close that uh, vector triangle so that we have a static equilibrium. Okay. Uh, by the way, these two examples which I gave you are uh, there in the appendix of my book. So, those of you who want to know about more it about it in details can look into my book. Thank you.